Welcome back strangers. Now that we are a few weeks into 2019, I thought it would be a good time to look back at the strangest unsolved mysteries of 2018 that you might have missed or have forgotten about. Why did the Hart family drive off the side of a cliff? Sarah and Jennifer Hart and their six adopted children were believed to be inside the family's SUV when it plunged off a cliff in California. The Hart tribe, as they called themselves, were known to help the youth, strangers in need, and help support racial equality in their community. Yet, officials believe the couple may have intentionally killed themselves and their six children in March of 2018. Information from the SUV's computer system suggests the crash was intentional. It showed the vehicle stopped right before it accelerated suddenly as the car drove off the side of a cliff. There were no skid marks at the scene and five bodies of the family had been recovered, with toxicology reports showed that Jennifer Hart had a blood alcohol level of 1.02 when the legal limit for a DUI is 0.08. Some of the children's bodies that had been recovered had a significant amount of an ingredient commonly found in Benadryl, which can make you very sleepy. No one in the SUV were wearing seatbelts when they plunged off the side of the 100 foot cliff. Still, no one knows why they would do such a horrific thing to themselves and their children. There have been conflicting reports about the family. Many say they were happy, while others say not so much. Sarah Hart's co-worker told police that Sarah had mentioned she wished someone had told her it was okay to not have a big family. Then she and Jennifer would not have adopted the children. Sarah was charged with domestic assault and malicious punishment in 2010 after a teacher found a bruise on her six-year-old daughter. Sarah pled guilty and was sentenced to 90 days in jail, but nothing else came of it. In 2013, the Department of Human Services in Oregon investigated the family after receiving reports of abuse and neglect to the couple's children when the family were living in Oregon. One person interviewed in the investigation said Jennifer appeared to be controlling in her relationship with Sarah, as well as manipulative and cold to her children. Three days before the SUV crash was discovered, the Washington State Department of Social and Health Services received a call alleging that the Hart children appeared to be victims of abuse and neglect. One of the boys kept coming over to a neighbor's home and asking for food. He said his parents would sometimes stop feeding the children as a form of punishment. Yet this couple always appeared to be happy on social media, constantly posting pictures of their kids smiling all over the internet. They would share their family's hiking adventures and their arts and crafts online. Many of their friends were shocked when they heard the allegations that the crash may have been intentional and the accusations of abuse and neglect. What do you think, strangers? Was this all a freak accident or did something more sinister happen? In March, a bag full of 54 severed hands was found at a popular fishing place in Siberia, 20 miles from the Chinese border. Police have been unable to determine who any of the hands belonged to. Only one of the hands had any remaining usable fingerprints that helped determine who it belonged to. Medical bandages and hospital-style plastic shoe covers were found next to the bag of hands, leading some to think that the hands were removed from medical cadavers to help prevent identification of the illegal cadavers. The Russian government did announce that they thought the hands were illegally disposed of by nearby medical institutions. However, locals haven't reported seeing anything suspicious in the area and aren't quite sure where they actually came from. Another popular theory is that the hands may have been axed off as a form of punishment for theft. What would you do if you found a bag full of 54 severed human hands? On August 20th, a leading Dutch cybersecurity expert, Arjen Comfis, checked out of his hotel in Norway. He had told his friends that he planned to take a train to Trondheim, which was 10 hours away, but he never boarded the train. Two days later, at the end of his supposed holiday, he did catch his return flight to Amsterdam, but he was never seen again. After an exhausting search by Norwegian officials and Dutch investigators, no one was able to find any clues to what happened to Arjen until September when his ID card was pulled from nearby Arctic waters and a kayak that was believed to belong to him was discovered. Yet more mysteriously, his mobile phone records showed that 10 days after he was seen leaving his hotel by his friends, both his work and personal cell phones were briefly switched on more than a thousand miles away in a small Norwegian town on August 30th using German SIM cards. Arjun was an advocate for online privacy and supposedly had ties to WikiLeaks along with personally advising governments, corporations, journalists, and activists on information security. This has led to many believing that Arjun was assassinated or vanished after becoming a spy. 
Others think he purposely disappeared to escape his current life. What do you think happened to Arjun? Polio was officially eradicated from the United States in 1979. Before the introduction of the polio vaccine, it was one of the most feared diseases in the United States, with outbreaks causing more than 15,000 cases of paralysis each year. It is a highly infectious disease that can cause lifelong paralysis and can be deadly. In 2018, a mysterious polio-like illness sickened children in 46 states this year. The Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, has confirmed at least 252 cases of this strange paralyzing sickness. The sickness begins with mild cold-like symptoms, but it quickly progresses to muscle weakness, facial and eyelid drooping, slurred speech, trouble swallowing, paralysis, and eventual respiratory failure. The CDC is referring to the illness as acute flaccid myelitis, or AFM. AFM isn't completely new. The CDC has been tracking it since 2014, but the fact that there has been so many new cases in 2018 implies that there is a serious contagion that spread across the country in 2018. Have you heard of anyone having this? There have been at least two confirmed cases in our home state of Virginia. Ming Huaichu is a Chinese politician who was the president of Interpol, the international police, from 2016 to 2018. He also served as the vice president of public security in China from 2004 to 2018. He disappeared in September after sending his wife an alarming text message that included a knife emoji and instructions to wait for his call. Or at least that's what his wife said supposedly happened. Chinese officials claimed that they last heard from him in October when he supposedly resigned from his post and was detained by officials after being accused of taking bribes by the Chinese anti-corruption authority. His arrest and the apparent lack of due process has raised questions about law enforcement tactics by the Chinese government. Ming's wife is now in the custody of Chinese authorities, still believes her husband is being politically persecuted by the ruling Chinese Communist Party. Others agree saying Ming is one of the latest high-profile people targeted by the country's ongoing anti-corruption campaign. It has targeted thousands of people, including government officials, billionaires, and even A-list celebrities who have all mysteriously vanished this year. What do you think happened to Ming? Did he just walk out on his life? Was he detained by government officials? Did he accept bribes and not deserve his position? Who won the $1.5 billion Mega Million jackpot? In late October, the winning ticket to the second highest lottery drawing in US history was sold in a convenience store in Simpsonville, South Carolina, a small town with a population of only 22,000 people. Today, the lucky winner still remains anonymous. South Carolina is one of the few states that allow winners to legally remain anonymous. So today, we still don't know if whoever bought the ticket has claimed the prize yet, or if they're sipping sweet cocktails on a beach somewhere. What would you have done if you had won the $1.5 billion? On October 30th, a skeleton was discovered under the basement of a home in Long Island, New York, 57 years after the man who lived there went missing. The skeleton shows blunt force trauma to the skull, and it's been confirmed that the skeleton belongs to the homeowner Michael Carroll's father, who disappeared in the 1960s. Some family members believe that George had run away and that he had returned to Korea, Others suggested he was killed and buried in the basement. The area was under construction at the time he went missing, and his wife, Dorothy, had never reported her husband as a missing person. She led her children to believe that George had abandoned his family and didn't love them anymore. Not long after George's disappearance, a man named Richard Darris moved into the family's home. He eventually married Dorothy, and they had a son together. Richard and Dorothy eventually divorced in the early 1980s. Michael purchased the home from his mother before her death in 1998. He added on to the home, but he couldn't stop thinking about what happened to his father. After hearing all those strange rumors that he could be buried in the basement of his family's own home, eventually caused Michael to consult a psychic and a team of paranormal investigators to see what happened to his father. Eventually not getting the results he wanted, Michael used ground penetrating radar to analyze the basement floor to see if anything could be buried underneath. The reading indicated there was something strange directly six feet below the basement floor. 
Michael began excavating the basement of his house three years ago, but he had to constantly stop and start because he was afraid of destroying the foundation of his house and he eventually had a stroke that caused him to stop the whole project until his two sons started helping him with the project and finished digging up the basement and discovered the remains of poor George. The discovery was a relief to the family, finally getting closure on what happened to their father. DNA tests confirmed that the skeleton belonged to George and the police are now treating the investigation like a homicide and still have no idea how George ended up under the basement. What do you think happened? What caused George to end up under the basement floor of his own home decades ago? Thanks for watching strangers. What do you think the strangest unsolved mystery of 2018 was? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider helping us by leaving us a like, a comment, subscribe if you are new, and of course, smash that bell button so you don't miss out on one of our videos. We release new videos every Wednesday where we cover all things strange, and we do a live podcast on our channel every Friday at 8pm Eastern Time. So until then, stay strange.